this is Robert with Pioneer Smokehouses and today I'm going to give you five tips for the Char Griller Smoking Pro Offset Smoker. Now first thing I want to tell you is, is that all of these tips and more are on the website so the link is directly below if you want to check that out. And also if you have a tip to add to it comment and I will test that tip and add it to the website. So first let's start off with the connection between the firebox. Now, you really want to encourage good airflow, and so right here in the seal here, it's best if you add some kind of sealer. Now, I like to use the lava lock, and it's just a high temperature RTV silicone, and you put it on there. So first, I loose fit the box per the instructions, and then I will come along and seal it. Now. You could seal it really good along the bottom. I don't think it's as important, but you definitely want to make sure that you seal around the top really well so that way you get that good airflow across the top of the firebox. Now, once you've put that RTV in there, you have plenty of time to work with it and then you can tighten down your bolts. On one of the mods, I added two longer bolts at the top of this container. Now would be a good time to do that. So next is make sure that you provide good airflow around the charcoal uh, inside the firebox. Now I'm going to show you some pictures here and what we have is I took and used two old grill grates and modified them by cutting them with a cutoff wheel so that way I could lay them in a V pattern. And you'll see here that you can see how they are cut off and then angled so that way they will match and fit firmly on the grate you could go with grill grates that are just a touch smaller, but you do want to fill up the compartment as best as possible. The idea, and if you see the picture here, the idea is, is to get the charcoals in the middle and to keep the burning as close to the vent as possible and have it burn through. So that way you could burn for, say, three hours without maintaining the fire. Now, of course, you'll want to adjust the opening for the air intake for the temperature that you want. But that way you'll get even air circulation around the charcoal and get good burning all the way through. Also, another really good option is either to buy a pre-made charcoal basket or else to manufacture one of your own. And that works great, especially if you're just doing a standard minion method where you just throw a few charcoals lit in there. Um, I do find that it takes a little bit of time to get to the temperature that I want when I do that. but it works great and if you use a really hard charcoal it can last for hours with a very small amount of air intake. Next is a tuning plate or a baffle or some sort of manifold. Now I'm going to go ahead and open this up and you can take a look in here and what I've done here is I have used the charcoal basket that comes with this smoker as a manifold and I basically flipped it over and installed it and then cut some slots in it with my angle grinder. You can see the link to the video of me actually doing that and really the simple slots. Now if you're not getting the air and the heat distribution that you want you can either cut those slots a little bit larger which I might still consider doing or you could actually cut more slots in there. I find that right near the entrance and near the exit are the two warmest spots. So that would mean that if I cut some more in just in the middle that I would spread that heat around a little bit more. Now, of course, you can buy a baffle or a tuning plate online of some sort, um, but I recommend that what you do is you buy a large cookie sheet, like a full sheet pan, and then trim it to fit inside here the way you want it, and then drill holes to match the heat dispersal that you want. Keep the holes a quarter inch or smaller, that way you don't have a bunch of air flowing out, but then you, you can drill more holes wherever you want more airflow. The next tip is to add fire bricks or lava rock into the bottom of the smoker. Filling up the bottom of your smoker with something that has a lot of mass will actually help. Now, I like fire bricks. Um, I usually just use yard bricks, but I like to preheat them when I'm not cooking. So that way, not only do I season them, but I also make sure that they're gonna be safe for the temperatures that I want. I would recommend a fire brick from your local hardware store. They can be picked up cheaply 
and you don't have to modify them or anything. You just go ahead and set them in across the bottom. I'll show you a picture that I'm gonna take tomorrow of a couple of bricks that I have placed in the bottom of this one. And they're not well seasoned yet because I've only used it a couple of times with them. And that uh, manifold protects them from debris and stuff. So not a lot of it gets on there. And I'll show you this. Another thing that you can do is you can add a row of them in the back and in the very front, which will also increase thermal mass. Once they get preheated, when you open and close the door, it will actually bring the temperature back up to whatever your preheated temperature is faster because of their mass and the amount of temperature that they hold. Now, finally, we're going to go on with the chimney here. Now, when I start the chimney, I open it up 100% because I want to encourage good airflow and even heating and to get the fire burning well. And you can see that it's open well. Now, I'm going to go ahead and close this down to my normal running position, which is just around 50%, depending on the temperature I want. I do not want to completely close that off. And I'm going to go ahead and see if you can see this. I'm going to close this off all the way. And what's going to happen is, is with this smoker, you're just going to see a bunch of smoke coming around the edges here. And the reason is, is because this smoker is not a tight seal on the drum lid. This is a cut drum and not a door drum. And so basically the way they have manufactured this is with two pieces, one bottom body and one top body, and then it just folds over the top. What we don't want is we don't want a bunch of that air coming out, but we know that we're going to have that gap in there anyway. So we want to encourage the air to run its way through the smoker by leaving this open a little bit. And I would say right about there is about the minimum. And I'll pop a little picture that I took before I started the smoker right here showing about where I go with my minimum. Now it's okay if a smoke comes out the edges a little bit, but we want to make sure that we're encouraging it to run across the smoker in a normal pattern. Now all these tips are great for everybody to use to help them increase their outcome of their smoked food. Uh, but the only thing that will get you great smoked food is lots of practice. So I recommend that you practice on some things like chuck steak and just do it over and over again. Chuck steak does not require the amount of time that you might find with something like a pork butt or a pork roast, but it'll also give you a really good idea of whether or not you've got this figured out. Again, as you graduate from your chuck steak, go up to a chuck roast and get the largest chuck roast you can find. And also uh, tri-tips when they go on sale is also a really good option. But with a tri-tip, make sure that you don't go over on temperature because you can either cook a tri-tip fast to 130 degrees and then sear it, or you can cook it low and slow just like a brisket. But if you do it in between, you're gonna end up with tough meat. And the same thing does apply with your uh, chuck roast, but chuck roast is a little more forgiving than tri-tip because of the fat content. So if you saw anything that you like in the video, there's affiliate links below. Also, don't forget to go check out the website for the article that contains all of the tips for this smoker, which are a lot of good tips for any offset smoker, of course. Thanks for watching and have a great day.